Uh, good morning, our viewers all over the world. My name is Prophet Godfrey Liwayo uh, from Faith Alive International Ministries, coming live, streaming live on this Facebook uh, broadcast for our first Easter uh, conference uh, live broadcasting. I'm here this morning uh, with the help of my children, Godwin, playing music softly on the background. Nokutenda also helping us with the, uh, as the videographer and the mama interceding for us. And um, before we go and uh, pray, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Zororo Pumlani, who have helped us with the sponsorship for this particular uh, broadcast uh, program for this Easter. Uh, I know a lot of you have got policies, but if you are there, you don't have a policy, we would like you to, we would like to encourage you to join Zororo Pumulani, Shiri Akangwara, Inuwa Kadindere Hayo, Murai Satyanaya. Be well advised. Thank you. Let us just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We honor you this morning. Even, oh God, as we come before you, Lord, for this Easter message, I pray that you touch the hearts of the listeners all over the world. Father, clothe them with your message. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter, viewers all over the world. We are coming live from our house, uh, number seven, St. Patrick Street. And uh, this morning I'm going to be teaching or preaching on a subject which is upon my heart. The power of the cross of Jesus. The power of the cross of Jesus. And uh, we'll open our Bible from the book of Matthew 16, uh, verse 16 to 18. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon, but your flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of heads shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We also have a scripture in the book of Mark 8 verse 34. Uh, it said, Jesus was saying to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. 1 Corinthians 18 uh, is also a, a very important scripture there. Matthew 10 verse 38, and whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. This is Jesus who was saying in Romans 5 verse 8, the Bible also says, but God showed his love for us in, the, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God showed his love to us. That while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Amen and amen. He died for us whilst we were still sinners. And uh, in today's world, many people are taking Christianity very casual. We have many casual Christians than serious Christians. I want to say before there is a cross, before there must be a cross before there is a crown. There must be a suffering before the glory. There must be sacrifice before any reward. And the cross of Jesus Christ, the cross of of the resurrected Jesus Christ is a sign of the sacrifice. It's a sign of the great work that was done at the cross of Calvary for you and me. The cross of our Lord Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of our faith. It is the symbol and the cornerstone of our faith. 
in our churches, in our pulpits, we have to go back to preach Jesus Christ. Him alone, the resurrected Son of God. In our pulpits, let's preach about the power of the cross, the power of sacrifice, the power of the love of God that whilst we were still sinners, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to die for us. Amen and amen. It is the chosen symbol of Christianity. This cross is the symbol of Christianity. What does the cross of Jesus Christ mean to us today? For some, the cross is just a, a necklace they put on, a, on, the, on their necks. A gold, it may be gold, it may be diamond, it may be silver, but it doesn't have any sense or a meaning to them. To some, the cross is just a wooden uh, timber that is well uh, shaved and put and displayed there. But the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ is more than a wooden uh, thing. It's more than a, a necklace, the symbol of a necklace in your neck. It is the power of God. It is the power of God. As you quickly also look at 1 Corinthians, uh, the first Corinthians 1 verse 18, there is also a very powerful scripture there about the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. Let's just hear what the Paul was saying to the church at Corinth. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18. I like this. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. The message of the cross of Jesus Christ. The message of the cross is the foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us, who are being saved, it is the power of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The cross is the power of God to those who are in Christ, to those who are saved. But to those who are perishing, the cross is foolishness. He continues to say, verse 19, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Verse 20, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is this disputer of this age? Has not God made the foolish the wisdom of this world? 21, for since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. It is the God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. I like verse 22. For Jews request a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom but we preach jesus christ hallelujah but verse 23 but we preach christ crucified in the jews to the jews a stumbling block and to the greeks foolishness the cross of jesus christ means different things to different people for example, here in the book of 1 Corinthians, we have got three uh, scenarios here. To the Jews, the cross of Jesus Christ was foolishness. To the Jews, the cross of Jesus Christ was a stumbling block. It was a stumbling block. To the Greeks, the cross of Jesus Christ was a foolishness. But to us who are said the cross of Jesus Christ, but to those who are called, both the Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. It means, it's like uh, the cross divides people because the Greeks were after a sign. The Greeks, they were really after a sign. They were really after a sign. The cross of Jesus, it separates. Paul often uh, derived the human race into uh, different um, categories. Not because of age, not because of race, not because of the skills of people. 
but because of the behaviors of those people. Because he said, uh, as I've just read, for some Paul says the cross and the preaching of the cross is a foolishness. But for such a people who are referring to the foolishness of the cross, they are perishing. Anyone who says the message of the cross of Christ is foolishness, that man or that woman is perishing. There are also those who are being saved, like us as Christians. This is the power of God. The cross is the power of God. The cross, it becomes the power of God. To some, it's not just a foolishness. It is an offense. Offense to the Jews. Because they say it is like a, a stumbling block. Paul wants the Corinthian church to focus on the cross. And we are doing the same. Child of God, even as you are relaxing in that uh, living room, on that bed, listening to the thunder of my voice, I want to say to you, focus to the cross of Calvary. I want to bring to your attention that you need to focus you, uh, to the cross of Jesus Christ. Because to the Jews, verse 22 says, the Jews, they were looking after a sign. And I want to say also to the children of God who are hearing me now, signs and miracles, they confirm the message. But you cannot be saved by signs and wonders. You are only saved uh, by, by, uh, from your sins by the power of Calvary, by the power of the blood of Jesus, the cross of Calvary. Signs and wonders cannot save you from your sins. They cannot save you from your sins, but they confirm the message of the cross of Calvary. Verse 23 was saying, the cross was a stumbling block to the Jews. Do you know what a stumbling block means in Greek? A stumbling block in Greek, uh, there is a word called a scandalion. Scandalion. This is where we derive the English word scandal. You may not know what a stumbling block means, but I believe you know what a scandal means. To the Greeks and to the Jews, the preaching of the cross was like a scandal. It was like a scandal. It was like an offense to them. But I'm here to urge you, let's preach the cross of Jesus Christ. Let's preach about even as we are celebrating his death, his burial and the resurrection. We are bringing to your attention that the preaching of the cross brings power into our lives. Bring power back into our churches. Bring power back to the message of the cross in the mighty name of Jesus. We also hear say uh, any scandal uh, in Deuteronomy 21 verse 23 uh, the Bible was saying anyone who hangs on a tree is under a case. So they were saying because Jesus Christ hanged on a tree, was um, crucified on a tree, he was cursed. But this is not the case. It was one of the greatest miracles that has ever happened to many kind about the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We say glory to the living God in the name of Jesus. You may, when you stand in a garage, it doesn't make you a car. When you are standing or attending church regularly, it doesn't make you a Christian. There must be conviction. There must be a reception. You must uh, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God and He must come into your life. Then you will be saved. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Christians, they look at... Uh, many people in the world are looking, some in books for role models, some in uh, videos, TVs for role models. But as for us, our greatest and, uh, and everlasting role model must be Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, in the name of Jesus. Where we have just read in, in Mark, it said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Deny yourself and carry your cross. Deny yourself Carry the cross of the Calvary. Carry the cross of Jesus Christ. And follow me. In this Easter season, you must begin to deny yourself and carry the cross. 
carry the cross, carry the cross of Jesus Christ, and they follow him. And everyone has a cross ready made for them to carry. Anyone has got a cross ready made for them to carry. It is only Christianity where the leader knew he was going to Jerusalem to be killed. Otherwise, if it was someone who's, who was saying that uh, I am going to Jerusalem and I'll be killed, some people would have changed uh, the direction. But Jesus Christ, in this season, he went to Jerusalem knowing full well that the hour had come for him to be uh, given uh, up. And after the third day, he would rise up again. Amen and amen. And as he continued to do that, the Bible tells us that Peter, he took Jesus aside and rebuked Jesus and he said, what is this you are saying? This shall not come to pass. This shall not happen. This was Peter rebuking Jesus Christ. There was a small drama, uh, dramatic scene taking place and Jesus also turned aside and, and they said, get thee behind, devil. He was referring to Peter. They have eaten together. They have walked together. They have shared the word together. But at this point in time, Peter was now referred as get thee behind Satan because he was preventing Jesus Christ to, 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 to sacrifice, to be sacrificed. I want to say, as you are hearing me right now, anyone who prevents you to make a, a sacrifice for the kingdom of God, it's not coming from the, 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 it's a voice of the enemy. Any negative, negativity, words coming from any quarters, preventing you to sacrifice for the things of God, that voice is not the voice of God. That voice is the voice of the devil in the name of Jesus. And I rebuke that voice that is preventing you to sacrifice in the things of God. In the name of Jesus, he said to Peter, get thee behind Satan. Because Peter, what had entered Peter was not of God. It was of the devil preventing him to sacrifice in the name of Jesus. We, when we come to Christ Jesus, as we receive him as Lord and Savior, we are not supposed to come to him on our own terms, but we come to him on his terms and on his conditions. On his terms and on his conditions. What can prevent you or what can affect us the sacrifice leading to our own salvation what can do that out of all hearing me how many of you did not say a lie maybe this morning maybe yesterday maybe last year how many of you didn't say a lie we are talking about a life of sacrifice the cross is a life or a symbol of sacrifice. You, are, you were a, a professional liar, but when you came to Christ, that lifestyle has to, you had to forgo it. Why? Because you are sacrificing for Jesus Christ. Some of the people hearing me now, they were fornicators, they were adulterers, but when they came to Jesus, they had to sacrifice. That means living that other kind of lifestyle. Some of you have been stealing since you were children. It may be sugar. It may be meat from the pot when your mother was uh, busy cooking meat and you went out and uh, stole some pieces of meat. Anyone who steals is a thief. But we are here to say, when you came to Jesus, you sacrificed yourself and now you are no longer a thief. You are no longer living that same lifestyle. Going to the cross is not nice. Going to the cross was not nice for our master. That's why you hear him, you heard him saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabakatana, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That was Jesus Christ who was shouting or who was crying at the cross of, of Calvary. That was the only uh, uh, portion in the scriptures where God forsook Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He did not end his ministry without the cross. He did not end his ministry without a sacrifice. 
even today when you visit India, um, I heard, I read a book which said that there is a book, there is a church in India. It's uh, actually uh, for the Roman Catholic cathedral called, in a place called Chennai, there's a cathedral which was built by Thomas, one of the disciples of Jesus Christ. It was because of the sacrifice that was made by Jesus Christ. And the 120, they stood uh, on that day waiting for the gift of the Holy Spirit in the upper room. And after that, we begin to see, even during the season of persecution of the church, they went abroad, but they continued spreading the message of the Christ, Jesus Christ. When last did you preach about Jesus? When last did you tell somebody about the great love that Jesus did at Calvary in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Some of, in the Bible, we have some of the most exciting stories, like the Good Samaritans, like the story of the Ten Virgins. But those stories are good. They've got lessons. But one of the most important things is the cross of Calvary, the blood of Jesus, and Jesus himself. Hebrews 9 says, Without the shedding of blood, there will be no remission of sins. Without the shedding of blood, there will be no remission of sins. We are forgiven our sins because there was blood that was shed for us at Calvary. Peter, he was a very good person going to church every time. He was appointed as head of the church. But we see Satan entering Peter. You may be a leader, you may be a pastor, you may be a bishop, you may be an apostle, you may be a prophet, you may be an evangelist, you may be an elder, you may be holding powerful position in the church. But in this season, we are saying, guard your life from the wiles of the enemy. Peter, the devil entered Peter. He entered Peter. There may be times when you may be you know, moments of set, uh, of weakness and the devil may, may enter you. You need to have the spirit of discernment, high level of discernment in this season so that you may not perish. Because according to the Corinthians, the preaching of the cross was foolishness to them. But to us uh, who are saved, it is the power of, Christ, of Jesus Christ and to us. You need a strong discernment spirit to send Satan. You need a strong discernment spirit to sense the availability of the devil, of Satan. High level discernment detects Satan. High level discernment, even during this season and period of lockdown at this Easter, Satan can just even enter you in your home. You need high level spirit of discernment in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Matthew 16, verse 24. If any man who comes after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. To deny yourself means refuse to live a sinful life. Don't live a sinful life. Refuse to be rebellious. Refuse to cause a havoc in the house of God, in the body of Christ. Many people have thrown away the implications of this scripture today. If any man who comes after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Take up his cross and follow me. When you take this scripture away, you introduce a powerless, empty religion in your life. You introduce a, an empty and powerless religion into your church. It, it becomes dry, it becomes boring, it becomes just religious. But when you restore this scripture, if any man who comes after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me, you introduce power in the church, you introduce power in your, in your life, you introduce a, not an empty religion, but a powerful, it becomes life itself. The preaching of the cross is the power of God unto salvation. 
this Easter season, let me tell you, my brother, my sister, the preaching of the cross of Calvary, the preaching of the cross is the power of God unto salvation. Take away the cross, you have taken away the power. If you remove the cross, you have taken away the power. If you remove the cross, you've taken away the power. Many churches these days have taken away the cross and they become powerless. I am here to urge you, my brother, my sister, take up your cross. Don't deny Christ. Preach about the cross because it is the power of God unto salvation in the name of Jesus. These are the demands of discipleship. Lay something down. Let him deny himself. It means lay something down. Lay something down. Deny yourself. Galatians 2, verse 2b says, I am crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ living in me. And this is in the Norarama, as in the Jesu Norarama Mandiri. It's no longer I who lives. It's no longer I who lives because I am crucified with the Christ. No longer me who live, but Christ is living in me. Christ is living inside of me in the name of Jesus. And it's because the same scripture continue to say, let him deny himself and take up the cross. Taking up the cross means pick something up. Pick something up. Take up the cross. Not my will, but thy will be done. Many people, even those who are following Christ, they are doing the will. But in this Easter season, I am urging you, not your will, but the will of God. Not my will, but the will of Jehovah. Not my will. Let the will of God be done. We come to God not on our terms, but on his terms in the name of Jesus. Let your will be done in this nation. Let your will be done in this in my life. Let your will be done in the lives in the name of Jesus. Not your will. Begin to deny yourself. Pick up something in the name of Jesus. And the same scripture says, and he take up his cross and follow me. And follow me. It follow me simply means leave something out. Leave for something up. Follow me. Follow me. If you follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. If you follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Sacrifice releases power. Since you were born again, what have you sacrificed for Jesus Christ? Since you received Jesus Christ 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 20 years ago, some of you have reached even 40 years following Christ 6 months ago, I am here to ask you, what have you sacrificed for God? What have you sacrificed for Jesus Christ? Because sacrifice, it releases power. Sacrifice releases power. With hold not, sacrifice, and you become powerful. Many people who sacrifice, it, even doing things in the house of God, they are powerful Christians. They are amazing children of God. They are amazing sons of God. They are amazing Christians in the name of Jesus. But today's Christians have some aims, have some aims as demonized unbelievers. For some, the blessings of God only it refers only to car, house, wife, girlfriend, a, a new job. That's all. Those are the blessings of God. But the blessings of God, they make the rich and make it and added no sorrow into your life. They make it rich and added no sorrow into your life. The blessing of the Lord, the blessings of the Lord is more than riches. It's more than earthly riches. It's more than houses. It's more than cars. It's more than graduations. Gradually, the reason why the church of the living God worldwide has become weak is because we Christians are no longer living sacrificial lives. We are no longer living sacrificial lives. Christians of old, some of them, they used to sacrifice walking 10 kilometers to go and preach Jesus. Some of them, they used to sacrifice opening their houses to make Christ known. What have you sacrificed for Christ since you received him? It is time for us to realize that there is something for you to do. There is a play. You need to play your part in the cross. You have a party to play. 
in this cross. You have a party to play in the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus. Christianity is not coming to church to sit down. Christianity is not just wearing good, a uniform or a good, nice clothes, a suit on a Sunday and you make it Christianity. You can't just go to church to sit down. You can't just live a life like that as a Christian. You have to do something for God. You have to pay the price. That is the meaning of the cross. Pay the price. Sacrifice something for Christ. <coughs> Sorry. Sacrifice something for Christ. Sacrifice something for Christ. Some of the people going to church means nothing. It's just whiling up time. Going to church, it means nothing. It's just whiling up the time. But I'm here just to remind you that the preaching of the cross is the power of God unto salvation. Amen and amen. Uh, let me just read again 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18. As we are about to close. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It is the power of God. The message of the cross is the power of God unto salvation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want to leave this question to you. Have you given up for Christ? What have you stopped doing because you belong to Christ? What have you stopped doing because of Christ? What pain have you experienced because of Jesus Christ? What have you sacrificed because of Jesus Christ? Where is your cross? Where is your cross? What have you we thank you. Where is your cross? Where is your cross? What have you given up since you received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Is it your boyfriend? Is it your girlfriend? Is it your marriage? Have you given up jokes because of Christ? Have you given up your marriage because of Christ? If you now have good behavior against your nature because of Christ, have you gone through some pain because of Christ? Have you forgiven? Is there any change in your life because of Christ? Is there any change in your family because of Christ? In your life because of Christ? In your language because of Christ? In, is there any fornication that you forsook because of Christ? Is there any adultery that you forsook because of Jesus Christ? Have you... Is there some painfulness in your life because of Christ? Have you lost something because of Christ? If not, your cross is still lying on the ground. If not, your cross is still lying on the ground. Is there a painful change in your life because of Christ? If not, your cross is still on the ground. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If, even if you, in, in today's world, you look at everyone in the government, all the senior government position, position, everyone is a Christian. Everyone has got a church. Be, belonging to a church does not automatically mean that you are born again. Because if so, even the policies in governments would reflect Jesus Christ. At the school, many people, they attend the scripture union, but they don't want to share their food with others. They don't want to share with some people in need. To be a Christian is not easy. To be a Christian is not easy. 
That's what I am saying. Christ didn't lower the standards for us. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, didn't lower the standards for us. That's why in this Easter season he's saying, carry, deny yourself and carry the cross. Follow him. Deny yourself. Carry the cross. Follow him. Following Christ will follow, will cost you something. What is following Christ cost you? I don't know if there is that word mean uh, costed you. What is following Christ meant to you? Following Christ will cost you something. If you don't want to take up your cross, God will raise up another person. If you don't want to pick up your cross and follow him, God is going to raise someone, another person, and someone better to do the same job and the same assignment. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shekorobos. Sacrificing something seems to be no more part of the church today. The church is now full of liars. The church is now full of thieves. Everything in the world is with us here fully. But Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew 16 says, I'll build up my church upon this rock and no gate of hell shall prevail over it. No gate of hell shall prevail over the church. My brother, my sister, my father, my mother, God is calling us back to pay a price for following Christ. This Easter season of 2020, in, that, in the comfort of your home, He is calling you to pay something for following Christ. Take up your cross. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. You cannot marry an unbeliever when you are following Christ. Do not be an equally young. You cannot live without paying tithes as a Christian. It's not easy to be a believer. Living for Jesus is not easy. It will cost you something. It will cost you something. Remove selfishness in your life. Why businesses are privatized? If you tell someone you have cancer and there's a toothache, everyone, every man for himself. But we need to stand for one another these days. Deny yourself before you can minister to anybody else. This is the call that Jesus is saying to us. Deny yourself before you can minister to anyone else. Bless everyone. For example, pastors, they sacrifice their own lives. They say no to personal desires. To be useful Christians, what do you do for God? When you come to church, what do you contribute? When you come to the house of God, what do you contribute? The church is full of touch me Christians. Bless me, Christians. I receive Christians. But this is God expects more from you. Oh, Rabbi Shatter. Jesus Christ. We need to go back to sacrificing. We need to go back to the life of sacrificing for the things of God. We need to go back to Denying ourselves and carrying out the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The question, Christians, what are you going to do for God from today going forward? Go and do something for your God. Do something for Jesus Christ. This is the message that Jesus Christ was saying and is saying at the cross of Calvary today. Do something for the kingdom of God. Make a contribution for the kingdom of God. Hey, Kara. And when you are not involved in anything in the house of God, no one will know you. No one will know you. Nobody will call you 
Nobody will thank you. Nobody will remember you. But when you begin to sacrifice for the things of God, even in the house of God, people begin to call you. People begin to remember you. And people begin to thank you. I'm here to say, the Lord Jesus needs you. This Easter, he has need of you. The Lord Jesus needs you. Come back to Jesus, the Son of the living God. Come back to him. In the name of Jesus. Shalaba Satarabaha. You are a personal Christian. Nobody knows you. That's what you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This our Sunday schools knows uh, needs you. Our youths, they need you. You may be a mature couple and you're doing nothing in the house of God. I'm saying after the lockdown, wherever you are, in whatever church you go to, begin to participate. Because Jesus Christ, the message of the cross this season is that God has got need of you in the name of Jesus. Some people, they've got this tendency to go to the Sunday schools, only plants and shout at the, uh, at the teachers. They don't know this amount of sacrifice. They don't know the ma amount of uh, contribution and the sacrifice behind the scenes. Some people, they have the tendency of talking bad about pastors behind the scenes. They don't know the amount of sacrifice. This is that Jesus saying, He has need of you. He has need of you. He has need of you. In the name of Jesus. God is looking for someone to answer the questions of the young people. Begin to participate in young people's lives. Begin to participate in olive plants, in Sunday school, in youth activity. Begin to participate because God is looking for someone who will answer the questions of our youth today. Who will answer the questions of our young adults today. Who will answer the questions of our men a ministry today who will answer the questions of the women today, of even of the singles today, in the name of Jesus. God is looking for people who work in the children's church. Sacrifice, sacrifice, and deliver the children. Talk to them. When you live a selfish life, personal, personal life will improve and become better. When you live as in an unselfish life, you will improve and become a better Christian. Did you help anybody even during this lockdown? Have you checked up with someone? You need to be a Christian who helps other people. As I conclude, God is looking for someone to help people without power. God is looking for someone who will help people who are powerless, who are looking for people who are abused, who are looking for people who need answers for life's problems, for life's challenges. And this is the message of the cross. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There are people who have no strength in their lives, even in the church. And God is calling them to rise up and minister. Ha, 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 ha. Rise up and begin to minister. Rise up and begin to minister. Let me tell you, I will encourage you to be a preacher till I die. I will encourage you to be in ministry till I die. That is my assignment. That is my assignment. May God touch your heart this morning. May God touch your heart this morning. As a father, may, be, may you become a father beyond your immediate family. May you be a father to the fatherless. May you be a mother to the motherless. May you begin to touch the lives of the young people. May you begin to touch the lives even of other leaders. May you begin to touch the lives of people in your congregation. In the name of Jesus, may you begin to touch the lives of people in your community even the lives of people in your family in the name of Jesus by sacrificing the lower life we gain the higher life live a life of sacrifice 
by sacrificing the pleasures of things, we gain the pleasure of life. By sacrificing the temporary, we gain the eternal. And the enemy, he concentrates on the weak points of a Christian soldier. You are a Christian soldier. You need to live a disciplined life as a Christian soldier. Let me just pray and bless you. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the message of the cross. Yes, it is foolishness to those who are perishing, but the cross of Jesus is power to us. Bless and heal those who are listening to me right now. That headache be healed. That decade be healed in the name of Jesus. Maybe you are here, you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Just follow after me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge I am a sinner. Come into my life. Be my Lord, be my Savior. From today, write my book, write my name in the book of life. I thank you for making me your child in the name of Jesus. I speak even order in your life in Jesus mighty name. Once again we thank God for our, our sponsors Zororo Pumlani and thank those who are working on the background Godwin Liwayo, Nokutenda Liwayo and our mother general Pastor K. God richly bless you. Amen.